Hi and welcome. Today I'm going to talk about different material models and how they can be applied and used for a thermoplastic material called ABS. It's a commonly used thermoplastic material. It has good mechanical properties. It's easy to work with. And it's used, for example, in all Lego pieces that are sold. So today I'm going to show you which material model works the best for this type of material. The first thing I want to talk about, though, is what experimental data do we have that we want to work with. So on the figure to the left, we see uh, stress strain data in uniaxial tension at a few different strain rates, uh, both monotonic tests and some cyclic loading, unloading, reloading type tests. And um, on the figure to the right, I have some uniaxial compression tests. Some of them are very high strain rates. Some of them are slow strain rates. We have some cyclic tests as well. And one thing that you can see right away when you compare the tension versus the compression plots here is that the yield stress in compression tends to be a little bit higher than in tension. And that's something that will be important for the material models that we're going to work with. So what I want to do is I'm going to go over to M calibration and I'm going to start comparing a few different models that I've calibrated. So this first material model is for a mesoplasticity model in ANSYS, so it's a multi-isotropic hardening plasticity model, and I also activated creep in it. So it sounds like a pretty sophisticated model, but it turns out that it doesn't work very well in this case. If I run this once, we can see that um, the unloading predictions here are very linear, as one would expect for an isotropic hardening plasticity model, not like what happens in the experiments. The, the predictions are also pretty poor between tension and compression, as we would expect. The error is about 27, 28%. Not a model that I recommend for ABS. Let's try something else. The next model I will demonstrate is the Abacus Johnson Cook model. Again, the Johnson Cook model is available in almost all finite element programs, so this could apply also to ANSYS, LS Dyna, or some other FE solver. So here's the experimental data. And when I calibrate it, I get predictions that looks like this. It's actually not particularly good in this case either. The Johnson Cook model can predict different strain rates, but it doesn't distinguish between tension and compression so well, and it doesn't uh, allow us to see recovery during unloading. The average error is close to 27%. I would not use the Johnson Cook model for ABS either. Let's try another model. The next model that I tried was the Bergstrom Boris model. So this is a model that I developed for rubbers. Uh, a number of years ago, and it works really well for rubbers. But even though it's tempting to apply it for a thermoplastic, it doesn't really work so well as you can see here. It does handle different strain rates, but it doesn't do unloading uh, in a particularly uh, good way. The average error is about 24%, as we can see here. So I wouldn't recommend the Bergstrom Boyce BB model for this thermoplastic either. And that's probably not surprising. It usually doesn't work so well for thermoplastics. Another material model that I investigated is a material model that's a kinematic hardening model. So in Abacus, it's called elastic plastic with combined hardening. And if I calibrate this, I have five back stress networks in this case. It gives me a nice smooth transition from elastic to plastic response. It also gives better unloading predictions, as you can see here. But the, overall, the error is about 23%. It doesn't match the strain rate dependence at all because that's not available in this model and it doesn't distinguish between tension and compression either. I would not use this type of plasticity model for this material either. There are other models that work better. So let's try something else. The next one that I want to talk about is this um, PRF, Parallel Rheological Framework model that's in Abacus. So this has been available in Abacus for many years. Here I use a three network version with yo hyperelastic elements and power type flow elements. And this can work very well for thermoplastics in some cases. In this case, it works okay, but it's not actually that good compared to some other models. The average error is about 16, 17%, so better than the plasticity models as one would expect, but it doesn't do so well overall. So it, it significantly over predict the permanent set after unloading in this case. And this is a weakness of this uh, particular PRF or PRF framework in general at this point. So yeah, you can use the PRF model for ABS, but I don't recommend it because it's not as good as I will show other models can do. So let's try something else. 
The next one is a model that's in the PolyU mod library. That's the library of material models that we have developed here at Polymer FEM. This is the FEN, the Flow Evolution Network model. I don't typically recommend this model these days. We have other models in the PolyU mod library that work better, but I just applied it to see what, what happened here. And if when I run it, you'll see that the error is better than the PRF model, but it, the predictions look kind of weird. It has almost like a double yield situation, which is not physical. So I, I don't certainly think that the FEN model is the way to go here either, but it's an available model and therefore I wanted to examine it here. The error is 13%. Still uh, not so awesome. Next one, and this is the second best model. This is the ANSYS TNM model. So the three network model is available in ANSYS. And if I run that one, you will see that it actually does a reasonably good job. So the TNM model in ANSYS is specifically developed for thermoplastics and it often does a reasonable job for that. It, has some weaknesses in terms of softening behavior and things like that, but the error is about 11.7%. This is a model that I wouldn't feel too bad about using in this case. Um, it is uh, by far better than any of the models we've seen so far in this study. So this is number two position. There is, of course, a better model than this, and I'm gonna show you that now. That's the polyum or the TNV model. And the TNV model is the three network viscoplastic material model that we developed for polymers in general. It's very accurate. It tends to win many of these competitions where I compare different material models to some extensive data set. And in this case, when I compare it, you'll see that the error is 8.8%. So it's significantly lower than any of the other material models. It, it does a good job of pretty much all that you see in the experimental data. So this is the model that I would recommend it's also the most accurate for ABS in this case, as we can see here. So let's summarize. So here is a summary of the average error in percent compared to different material for the different material models. The ones to the left here are not very good. These are plasticity models and the BB model, which is for rubbers. Errors is just too big. I would not use them. I don't see a particular reason why you would use any of those in this case. Surprisingly, perhaps to some of you, the PRF model does not work so well either. It has twice the error of the polyumo TMV model. Twice the error, like, okay, that's kind of disappointing in some sense. Uh, but it's available in Abacus if you're an Abacus user. But you should be aware that there are other options. And then the ANSYS TNM model is okay. That's the one you could use if you're interested in that, you have ANSYS. But the winner, the one that has the lowest error, is the polyumod TNV model. So that would be the recommended model in this particular case. If you have any questions on any of this, you can ask them below.